It's um, been great being here this morning at St Mary's College. Uh, it's been great to see the good things done with uh, the kids here uh, in this uh, great uh, Catholic educational establishment. It's also been uh, inspiring to be with the, uh, the young lads here uh, in this trades training center, doing things with their hands. Uh, one of them said to me before, um, it's certainly better than all that schoolwork. And the truth is, there's a whole bunch of uh, Australian young people who want to work with their hands. And they want to work in the trades and get properly qualified and go off and, and uh, make a living that way. As I said to one of them, if they're good at it, they'll make a mock that on the way through. And the encouraging thing about centres like this, this Trades Training Centre, is that it provides a good place for these kids to come. And I was speaking to the principal before, and Billy and I were saying it's made a big difference to the way in which um, uh, kids feel about uh, their choices. That is, when you're in a college like this and you've got a terrific centre like this, and Therese went off and visited the one which deals with hospitality, and the kids feel as if this is important, and that this is really important and recognised as such within schools. Um, one of the first undertakings I gave as, uh, way back then as leader of the opposition, uh, was to build trade training centres across Australia. It's part of building uh, the country's future. These things don't just uh, appear out of thin air. They're here because governments decided to make them happen. And, uh, and I'm proud of each and every one of these I've seen around the country. And I'm doubly proud when I look in the, the eyes of the young people who are uplifted by places like this, the state-of-the-art equipment they have, and their opportunity to carve out their own futures. And that's why across the nation today, uh, we are announcing uh, that the total number of um, trades training centres that we are uh, uh, having nationally will now rise to more than 500. There are something like 120 new trades training centres uh, being uh, announced right across Australia today. And this has all been part of our planning over the years, bringing the total number to more than 500. And so it's all about making sure that when we are building for the future, planning for the future, thinking about the future, we are making it possible for our kids to have the skills of the future. I'm proud of the fact that uh, right across Australia, and these are up, this next uh, set, and it's a huge additional uh, number, more than 120 uh, new ones, that we're going to have 500 or so uh, across the country supporting one and a half thousand secondary schools across the country, because uh, some schools pull together with a single trades training centre. I couldn't think of a more practical building block than this to help our young people in the future. Not every kid wants to go to university, not every kid wants to go off and, um, and become a rocket scientist. Some kids uh, want to work with their hands, boys and girls. And it's terrific that we are making it possible in every place like this across Australia for those kids to realise their dreams. One of the great challenges I've seen in countries around the world is when uh, the trades and the vocational system uh, begin to fall away. In this country, we've been blessed in the past with reasonable investments, um, but this needs to be taken further. And that's why I'm so proud of what we're doing here today and right across Australia. There'll be ministers of the government standing up in every capital city today across Australia, announcing where these centres will be going. I'm proud of that fact. It's great for the future of the country, it's great for preserving our skills and building new ones, and it's terrific for the kids concerned, because I'm on about making it possible for them to lead the most fulfilled lives possible. More broadly, um, we are, of course, uh, talking about uh, building uh, the economy here in Cairns as well. You can't build Australia's future without building the region's future. And Cairns is such a dynamic region, one I know and love and have been here countless times over the years. And so that's why we've been putting our best foot forward, not just with uh, institutions like this, but across uh, far north Queensland, we've invested in 66 new school libraries. Uh, we've put in some 8,000 new computers into the schools, seven new science and language centres, seven trades and training centres like this one that you see here. And we've already rolled out national broadband network to more than 2,000 local homes, 
and 10,000 are currently under construction. So there is a practical things that we have done to invest in the future of Cairns and Far North Queensland. But that's part of building the future for Australia. Uh, on top of that, uh, we've also been looking at what new jobs are going to come with the new industries of the future. Um, through Disability Care Australia alone, we project that we're going to have just on 800 new jobs here uh, by the time we get to the end of the decade in nurses and the allied health professions and areas associated with the care of people with disabilities. It's a whole new service industry which is emerging off the back of the country's first national disability insurance scheme. And then there's other practical stuff we're doing as well, which is mindful of um, some of the threats that affect wonderful communities like this too, in terms of natural disasters. And the announcement today by uh, Mark Butler uh, concerning uh, our new Bureau of Meteorology uh, initiative, some $58.5 million, with one central focus, to better predict, better analyse and best better get information out about natural disasters. If you come from Queensland, this is part and parcel of our life. If you come from far north Queensland, it's even more so. And we all can remember the devastation of Cyclone Yassi. Uh, we can all remember the devastation of the Queensland floods in southeast Queensland. So this is a practical measure to invest in our country's better preparedness for extreme weather events. And again, it's about investing in the future. Uh, communities uh, need to be as uh, prepared as possible for when big ones hit. It's important for the country's future. One other industry for the future up here I've been working hard on is what happens with tourism. You've heard me say many times before uh, that uh, the China mining boom is coming to an end. Well, the China mining boom is coming to an end, but the China tourism boom is just starting uh, in Australia and here in far north Queensland. And uh, over the last uh, several weeks, I've been in discussions with China Southern Airlines uh, the fourth largest carrier in the world, uh, an airline which has some 500 aircraft, uh, and from a country which is now looming as Australia's emerging major tourism market. Now China Southern have uh, only been here for a trial up until now. What China Southern have now indicated they'll commit to uh, is uh, to provide uh, direct seasonal services to far north Queensland in the future and uh, we should be seeing one of their first aircrafts arrive for a trial uh, here uh, fairly soon. Um, and I would thank China Southern uh, for putting this place, far north Queensland, onto the tourism map uh, in uh, China. Uh, the airline itself is based in Guangzhou, uh, which is the capital of Guangdong province. Guangdong province has a population of 100 million people. Uh, it's got rising per capita incomes and people are travelling for the first time. And this is safe, it's secure, it's beautiful, you've got the barrier reef, you've got everything that you could like, and now we're getting decent broadband as well. And so put all that together, you are seriously cooking with gas when it comes to the China tourism market here. Uh, finally, in the local area, I think people are all excited about the fact that when the G20 is hosted in Australia next year, uh, the G20 finance ministers will be meeting here in Cairns and Far North Queensland. I can think of a more beautiful place to come. Of course, that exists as a possibility because um, our government, uh, during my Prime Ministership, has uh, made it possible for Australia to become a member of the G20. In fact, we helped create the institution. And so the fact that we can now host this major global event in Australia, where we chart the future of the global economy in the, t in the rocky and turbulent years that lie ahead is great in itself. What's doubly great is that the finance ministers of the 20 most powerful economies in the world are going to be spending three, four, five days uh, in this beautiful part of Australia. And that's going to be a building bridge for the future in terms of this dynamic centre's reputation around the world, not just as a tourism ven venture, uh, as a conference venture, and also where we can do new things with the other economies in the world. Lastly, now let me just um, say something about the question of, um, of costings. And I think this is um, a pretty important one. Um, we now have uh, Mr Abbott's Treasury spokesman uh, saying that the Australian people have a right to know uh, the cuts that they will make. He said that on television last night. Um, when asked today whether 
all that costings and work had been done on their spending promises and their cuts, he said, yes, it had. So there's a pretty simple question here. If Mr Abbott's Treasury spokesman says that people have a right to know what cuts they will make, and Mr Hockey then says that all that work is done, why on earth is Mr Abbott not releasing it today? Why on earth? There's only one reason, is that Mr Abbott plainly has a hidden plan uh, on his cuts to jobs, education and health, and on the goods and services tax, because what he fears that if the Australian people knew what was in his plans, that they'd be very, very worried about voting for him. And uh, I noticed also today we have uh, good old Campbell Newman coming out, a person who's done more to slash and burn here in far north Queensland than anyone I could point at uh, in a long, long time, in terms of jobs, education, health. Mr Abbott, when asked about Campbell Newman's model this morning, said, well, that's the sort of model he embraced. He talked about that being the model for uh, tough decisions by a tough government. Well, I just go back to him levelling with people. If that's what you propose to do, what Campbell Newman did prior to the state election was say, no details, we'll have a commission of audit and off you go. And then rip 14,000 jobs out, 4,000 health workers sacked and massive cuts to education and health. You saw 240 jobs being lost, by the way, in Townsville where we were yesterday, associated with the Townsville-based hospital. So if Mr Abbott, who now says he will be the next Prime Minister, uh, is saying that Campbell Newman is his model, and he said that this morning, then frankly it's time that he levelled with the Australian people about where his cuts to jobs, health and education will go, and what his real plans are for the GST. You can't have a hidden plan like this forever. Mr.